Hello everybody, I'm Jose Pablo Castillo and I am Jorge David Sar and this is our Technical English 2 project. In this project we will show you how to use a vernier caliper and a micrometer. To show you these tools we went to Antigua Guatemala to a silver shop called Mayan. Enjoy our presentation. First of all, what's a vernier caliper? The vernier calipers give a direct reading of the distance measured to high accuracy. These calipers comprise a calibrated scale with a fixed yawn and another yawn with a pointer that slides along the scale. Vernier calipers can measure internal dimensions using the uppermost yawns in the picture at right external dimensions using the picture lower yawns, and in many cases depth by the use of a probe that is attached to the movable head and slides along the center of the body. This probe is slender and can get into deep groups that may prove difficult for other measuring tools. Sure that whatever you're measuring is clean and has no burrs on the edges. Step 2. Open the jaws of the caliber and position them on both sides of the piece you're measuring. Step 3. Push the jaws firmly against the workpiece. Step 4. Lock the clamp screw so that the jaws don't move. Step 5. On the vernier scale is a small number 0. Look and see how many centimeters divisions it is past on the bar scale. Step 6. See how many smaller number divisions the small 0 has gone past. This represents how many tenths of a centimeter the workpiece is measuring. Step 7. How many smaller divisions has the small zero gone past? Step 8. Look and see what division line on the Bernier scale best lines up with a division on the bar scale. This is how many thousands of a centimeter you have. Step 9. To measure the internal length, use the inside jaws. Step 10. To measure the depth of an object, first place the edge along the object and then use the depth probe. A micrometer, sometimes known as a micrometer screw gauge, is a device incorporating a calibrated screw used widely for precise measurement of small distances in mechanical engineering, as well as most mechanical trades. Along with other metrological instruments such as dial, vernier, and digital calipers, micrometers are often, but not always, in the form of calipers. A micrometer is composed of frame, the C-shaped body that holds the anvil and barrel in constant relation to each other. It is thick because it needs to minimize flexion, expansion, and contraction, which would distort the measurement. Anvil, the shiny part that the spindle moves toward and that the sample rests against. Sleeve, barrel, or stock is the stationary round part with the linear scale on it, sometimes vernier markings. Screw, the heart of the micrometer, it's inside the barrel. Spindle, the shiny cylindrical part that the thimble causes to move toward the anvil. Thimble, the part that one's thumb turns, graduated by markings. Ratchet stop, device on the end of handle that limits applied pressure by slipping as a calibrated torque.
Step 1. Place the object between the anvil and spindle. Step 2. Spin the ratchet until the spindle meets object. Step 3. Verify that both the anvil and spindle are touching the object evenly. Step 4. Set the timbal lock while the micrometer is still on the object. Step 1. Note that the measurement will start with the hole number 2. Step 2. Look at the 100,000 markings in the stock. Step 3. Look at individual 25,000 markings exposed next to the 100,000. Step 4. Find the number and corresponding marking on the thimble scale closest to, but underneath the measurement line on the stock. After that, Add the number to the 25,000 marking. Step 5. Flip the micrometer over to read the 10,000 marking. Okay, so this is the end of our Technical English 2 proficiency project. We hope you liked it. And by the way, here are our names and garnets. And see you next time. Have a nice day.